So we had a red day in the stock market today, guys. We had the Dow down a quarter of a percent, the S&P down 0.3. We had the NASDAQ down 0.4 as the Russell broke even. So we have to break it down, go over charts, stocks, my thoughts on the markets, plus more. So sit back, relax, hit the like button, subscribe, check out my Patreon, get your five stocks from Weeble and your 50 bucks from M1 Finance. All of that's linked down below. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. So look, guys, SPY is selling off towards $475, which is where I have my mark is at or below alert right now. And I'm telling you guys, and I've been saying this on the channel for days, if we break 475, which was resistance back in the middle of December, that's where we double topped, which is now support since we're trading above it. If we break under 475, this is likely to fall probably towards 465 to about 468, right around these moving averages on the four hour chart. And take a look, despite the fact that we hit an all time high today at 479, that was earlier in the day, we ended up dumping pretty aggressively in power hour. Take a look. Spy was at 478 at about 320 p.m. on the East Coast, and then all of a sudden, we started slipping aggressively. We got all the way down to 475.67, and now we're hovering after market hours above roughly $476. So it seems like we are getting that sell-off that we've been talking about, or at least the start of the sell-off. And again, there could be a couple more points of downside here on SPY as we are seeing volatility kicking up as well. The VIX went up 2.2% today. So let's take a look at what Triple Q did. Triple Q is also hanging on by a thread. It's hanging above $400 by a thread. And I'm telling you, I've been saying this, if we break 400, we're probably going 390, 395, right by the moving averages on the four hour chart. And if you guys saw my video earlier today, we broke down how even though the markets were red today, the, the small caps, a lot of small caps crushed it. We had SoFi up a ton, ChargePoint, DraftKings. We had the Chinese stocks, even though those aren't small caps. We'll talk about those in a couple of minutes here, so make sure you guys stick on throughout. We had JD and Alibaba crush it. We had Palantir up today. We had Snapchat, Tattoo Chef, Upwork, Smith & Wesson, and a lot of the large caps didn't do so well today. We had AMD down about 2%. Apple down 0.6, we had Google down 0.3, Amazon down 0.3, Intel, which is a stock that I've been recently buying, um, that is down, it went down about 0.2% today, nothing crazy, but overall, it seems like the smaller cap companies, those that were beaten down aggressively, those did very well today, and I'm very interested to see whether or not, and I mentioned this in my video earlier today, I'm interested to see whether or not this rally continues in the small caps, right? That's that's what we could be seeing here. Maybe a rotation out of large caps into those smaller caps, and I'm not too sure how long it's going to last, but hey, me being invested in SoFi and DraftKings, um, it was a pretty great day for me, even though the overall markets, like we discussed, went down. So let me know your thoughts. Drop me a comment down below. How did you guys do today? Did you um, did you get hit in terms of your portfolio? Did you go up or uh, was your portfolio green? Drop me a comment down below. Make sure to smash the like button as well. And Make sure to subscribe. We're trying to get 25,000 subscribers here as soon as possible. So let's talk about some stocks. And number one is good old Tesla, guys. Ticker symbol TSLA. Let's pop it up. Um, Tesla went down about 1.5% today. Nothing too crazy considering we got news that almost 500 thousand vehicles need to be recalled and these are mostly model three tesla expects to have to inspect possibly and repair uh and possibly repair about three hundred and fifty six thousand model three vehicles um and that's going to cost some money no kidding we don't know how much money that's going to cost but that's going to cost a lot of money um and moreover rotors or yeah rooters it, no it's rooters guys I know that. I know that. Don't make fun of me. Um, Reuters is reporting that 119,000 Tesla Model S sedans of unspecified model years will also need to be recalled because the front hood may open without warning and obstruct the driver's visibility. Could you imagine if you're on the highway 
self-driving, whatever, you're driving it, and then all of a sudden, boom, the hood pops up. I would freak out. How the heck are you going to stop that? I mean, <laughs> what are you going to do? Is there a button in the car? I've never actually driven a Tesla, so this is an actual question. Is there a button in the car where if the hood popped up, you can hit the button and it closes the hood? Probably not. You're going to have to just come to a halt, um, floor, or, uh, uh, smash on the brakes, right, and then hop out of the car and, and close the hood. I don't know. That is pretty dangerous. So at this point, 500,000 vehicles need to be recalled. Most of them Model 3, but we have some uh, Model S sedans as well, varying um, throughout the different years, the different model years. So what do you guys think about this? Seriously, I'm surprised Tesla stock didn't go down even more. Um, it only went down 1.5%. And don't get me wrong, just because it only went down 1.5% today doesn't mean it can't go down lower. I mean, this could have a drag on the stock over the next couple of weeks. But then again, with Tesla being a cult stock, um, you know, the following that Tesla has is ridiculous. People idolize Elon Musk. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't if we didn't really see a sell-off. Uh, or maybe we just saw a little bit of a, a drop, maybe 3-5%, and then we just ripped back up. You know, that's the type of stock that Tesla is. So let me know your thoughts. Drop me a comment down below in the comment section. Now let's talk about some other stocks. Um, ticker symbol MTCH, Match Group. This one went up 2.5% today despite the overall markets being red. And I like this because if I pull back here a bit... On the yearly chart, uh, actually, maybe even the uh, three-year chart, you guys can see it. Um, now that we're breaking back above $130, we closed at $133 today. Now we're trading back in this horizontal channel that this stock has been trading within for about a year at this point, since December of 2020. So now that we're gaining momentum above 130 and on the four-hour chart, you guys can see we're breaking above the 50 moving average. Now we're looking to potentially run up to 145 by the 180 moving average. I'm thinking there's going to be more momentum to come here on match group. We're seeing a clear-cut bullish divergence on the four-hour chart, and all we need to do now is pretty much take out the highs. Um, if you notice here on the five-day chart, we've been struggling the past um, five days pretty much, four or five days at about 135. If we break 135, guys, I'm telling you, in my personal opinion, of course, I'm not a financial advisor, I think we're going to see momentum towards 145. So I just put my alert at 135 again. If we break that point, we're probably going 145. So keep your eyes on Match Group Inc. HOLX is another one that is setting up nicely right now. Today we went up 2% for this stock. It broke above both moving averages. Um, it was actually, well, it's actually been above the 180 moving average on the four hour chart. But today we broke the 50 moving average, and now we're testing the top of the wedge. And in my opinion, um, this stock went up 2% today. It's gaining momentum. If we break the wedge here at about $77.50, $78, I'm going to put my alert right there. I think this stock's going to go, um, I don't want to say bananas, you know, to the point where it might go to $90, $100. Sure, it could do that, but... In the short term, we're probably going to go to 80 bucks again, which was the high from the middle of September. So that would give the stock from, let's say, $77.50 to $81. We're talking 4 or 5% upside. And if we take that high out, maybe even more. So watch out for HOLX and the Chinese stocks today, guys. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, they went ballistic. We had JD.com. Up over 7% today, which is awesome. And I'm not an owner of JD.com, but I actually like the way the chart's looking right now. We held the bottom of the uptrending channel here on the four hour. We closed above the 50 moving average. Um, we did see a little bit of selling pressure towards the end of the day, but nothing crazy. It seems like just a little bit of profit taking. You guys can see that here on the intraday chart. But overall, if JD's momentum continues, let's say we start breaking into the mid 70s, I'm talking 73. 74, 75. At that point, we might start ripping back above 80 again. So I'm watching JD very closely. And again, full disclosure, I don't own JD, but I do own Alibaba, guys, B-A-B-A. -B -A. And this one up even more. This one up 9.7%. You might as well call that a 10% green day. And this is one that you guys in my Patreon know you get all my moves, uh, buy, sells, trades, you know, uh, options, whatever the heck I'm doing, I post on Patreon. 
This is one that I was buying months ago, and I've been buying it. And my average now is like 170, 175, something like that. So I'm still underwater by a long shot. Um, and this is a long-term investment. So truthfully, I don't care what happens in the short term. I care about three to five years out. And I get the question all the time. Uh, you know, people, I feel like people are impatient, you know. Stas, what are you doing with Alibaba? I'm down 10, 20%. It's not doing anything. And I bought it three weeks ago, four months ago, three months ago. I'm like, dude, just relax. If you buy a stock with a long-term horizon, wh wh what does it matter what it does in, in a week or two or two months after? Uh, if anything, if you bought a stock... You like it at a higher price and it goes lower. You like it more when it goes lower. You know, I don't I don't get some people, to be honest. Um, you know, it's uh, for me, you know, I, I bought Alibaba recently again. You know, even though there's Chinese pressure, regulation, CCP, I understand all of that. Um, and, I, and I'm fine with that. I, I'm willing to make that bet to take that risk. Um, but it's crazy. You know, people think, oh, it's, it's going down in the short term. What, what what are you doing, Stas? Did you cut your loss? No, I didn't cut my loss. It's a long-term investment. Again, like I said, I can't reiterate it enough. If I'm wrong in three to five years, 10 years, fine. I'll, I'll take the loss, whatever. Uh, but I'm not just cutting it loose a couple months uh, a couple months after I made my investment or have been buying. I'm just not doing that. And I could regret it. Who knows? Actually, I'm not going to regret it because um, I understand the risks. It's just that simple. So watch out for Alibaba here, guys. It is breaking out of the 50 moving average, technically speaking. That's uh, been resistance for about a month and a half at this point. And if it starts taking out 130, 135 into the 140s, that could be a real reversal spot for the stock. But we're just not there yet. And quite frankly, um, you guys can see we're still downtrending. So keep that in mind. If you're looking to trade Alibaba, I'd be careful. But if you want to buy it for the long term, I'm not telling you guys what to do. But when a stock goes down, let's just put it this way, that is when you want to buy for the long term. If you believe in the company, the fundamentals, the financials look good, and so forth. And by the way, speaking of financials, my stock market for beginning video, uh, for, uh, for beginners video, is coming out in a couple of days. I finished it today. It is two hours and 20 minutes long, guys. I don't know if anyone's going to watch it. You know, I put a lot of work into it. Um, it's essentially a free course, so be on the lookout for that. I'm going to drop it on YouTube probably in a couple of days, and trust me when I tell you there's so much value in that. It's ridiculous. Probably my most valuable video ever. It has to be. I mean, it's two and a half hours long. It's essentially a free course, and I, I poured everything into it. So be ready for that. Be ready for that. It's going to be very good. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's talk about the next stock, Mercado Libre, M-E-L-I. This one has been reversing quite nicely recently from a thousand bucks. Now it's trading in the mid 1300s. Today alone, it went up 32 bucks per share, 2.5%. And it's, uh, it's about to break out, in my opinion, even further above the 180 moving average, which is right around 1400 per share here. So I'm going to put my alert at 1400 on Melly right now. If this point breaks, let me pull back a bit to the uh, one-year chart. You guys can see we're probably going to start making a move towards the top of this channel, whether it's 16, 1700, I don't know. But that is where I think it's going to go. And we've seen this uh, stock do this pattern time and time again in the past. It got overbought oversold. It's gotten to the bottom of the channel. Um, we, we've uh, traded choppily towards the bottom of the channel for some time. Then we rip all the way back up to the top of the channel. So I'm looking to see if Melly does that again. It looks like it wants to do it. So I'm watching it for that reason. And the last stock for today, ladies and gentlemen, is DoorDash. DoorDash went up 1.5% just in today's session in the middle of a red market, which makes sense. You know, DoorDash, I don't think it's a small cat. Um, let me see here. Let me let me pop it up. Actually, I have no freaking idea what DoorDash's market cap is. Probably if I were to guess, let's see if I'm right, I would say 15 billion. Let me see if I'm right. Maybe I'm way off on that. Um, oh my God, I'm way off on that. Jeez Louise, it's $52 billion. Uh, that might be a bit overvalued, uh, but I don't want to just say that because I didn't dive deep into it. But $52 billion for DoorDash. That is pretty, uh, pretty lofty. So I'm not going to say it's a small cap because it's not, but overall... It did well today, like the small caps did. It went up, like I said, 1.5%. I currently have my alert set at $160 per share. If we take that point out, 
You guys can see the uptrending channel. We're currently holding the bottom of the channel, um, which we're pretty oversold. Let's be honest. I'm seeing a bullish divergence as well. If we break 160, this is probably going to start going up towards 180, maybe 200 per share again. And if the 180 SMA breaks at 185 here on the four-hour chart, Dare I say we go to 225, 250 again? Maybe. I don't want to say 250, actually. That's a bit. Uh, it might be too far-fetched for now because we're only at 150. But close to 200, could we get there? I believe so. So, overall, guys, that's pretty much it. Tesla, keep your eyes on it. 500,000 vehicles need to be recalled. That's pretty interesting. Let's be honest. Match Group, watch it. HOLX, the Chinese stocks, even though a lot of you guys hate the Chinese stocks. I have an open mind when it comes to investing, and that we'll just put it that way. You guys heard my little rant with Alibaba. Melly and DoorDash. Keep your eyes on all of those, and of course, the small caps that we covered in my video earlier today, which you guys, if you didn't check out that video, go watch that video. It's pretty good. I go over my opinion on the small cap. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, check out my Patreon, drop me a comment, join the Patreon if you guys want to for all my moves in real time. And don't forget to get your five stocks from Webull. Use my link down below to deposit any amount of money. We each get five stocks. That runs out tomorrow. And the 50 bucks from M1 Finance also runs out tomorrow. Use my link down below to deposit 100 bucks with M1 and we each get 50 bucks. It's that simple. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Again, check the one out from earlier. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. As always, keep crushing the markets. Stay safe out there. Peace out, guys.